everyone, Shadow here, and welcome to another Marvel Contest of Champions video. So during a live stream, someone asked me to do a deep dive on a Tuma, and I looked and I hadn't done one yet, and I promised them that I would do one, and here it is. Now, a Tuma is a very annoying defender, and we're going to look at his kit and find out why. All right, so first, let's uh, look at his synergies. I always like to look at that first. And what I do is I don't just look at what the synergy does, but who the synergy is with. That way I can see how likely it is that I'm going to have this person on my team with Atuma to get the benefit of the synergy. So here we have a synergy with Namor. And Atuma gains 20% bleed potency but suffers 25% ability accuracy. Hmm. Okay. Um, Namor is a very niche champion. I don't use him all the time and not even close. So would I bring him on the team just for that? Probably not. Now, fear itself. Okay. Here we go. These are some champions I could see myself using. Every one of these champions, Juggernaut, Titania, Thing, Hulk, and Absorbing Man. Now, granted, Thing is more defense, but he actually is good on offense as well if you know how to use him. So I could easily see myself bringing these guys, okay? Now, what does it do? He gains 20%. Oh, wait a minute. Synergy champions gain 20% attack rating when fighting at a class disadvantage. Interesting. And regain the attack rating penalty when fighting at a disadvantage. Wow. Okay. I can definitely see myself bringing Absorbing Man, Hulk, Titania, and Juggernaut on the team. That's, that's a, a, a definite thing. Situational. So that's a good synergy right there. All right. Uh, frequent Kidnapper Miles. <laughs> okay. Power gain from the opponent evading is increased. Okay. By 15%. Um, I love Wasp. Other than that, I don't see myself bringing any of the others on the team. Uh, Invisible Woman really needs a rework, and so does Phoenix. Really, really do. All right, Shining, Simmering, and uh, Shimmering, and uh, Splendor. Start the fight with a dormant hydration charge that, while active, grants a 50% chance to gain up to 10 stacks of hydration on a well-timed block. Ooh. When hydration is gained this way, the charge is consumed and is reapplied when a Tuma gains hydration from another source. Okay, so... Both of those are good champions. I don't tend to use them that much. Um, I would probably bring Toad. I see myself using Toad more often than I would uh, Man-Thing. But they're both actually pretty good. All right. Enemies. All right. So these guys have another uh, Invisible Woman and Thing have another uh, synergy with them. So by putting Thing and Invisible Woman on your team, you can double up on this synergy. Okay, so Thing has that synergy, and Invisible Woman has this synergy. So that might be something useful if you want to bring Invisible Woman. Um, I'd rather have Thing than Invisible Woman on the team until they fix her. All right. Let's take a look here. So his signature ability, 126% at level 20, uh, to start the fight with a personal concussion debuff. It's paused until he gains a personal concussion from another ability. Incoming bleed debuffs suffer a reduced potency. As someone who runs double edge, 
I like that. Atuma's rough skin can now also deal damage anytime he strikes his opponent. Now, I remember when he first came out, I don't think that was the case. I know you took damage when you were hitting him, but this means that now when he's doing damage, it adds extra damage. In addition, it's damage increased by 5.26, uh, 62, <laughs> dyslexia, um, 62 for each bleed effect on either champion. So if you're fighting someone who already has a bleed debuff, like, oh, I don't know, they're running double edge, he will do more damage to you. Nasty. All right, that explains some things to me as well, since I'm always running them, and when I fight him, yeah, not a fan. All right, now, let's see. Um, let's see, plans can make the best out of the worst, okay, da-da-da. All ability, accuracy, modification effects on him have their potencies rever reversed. Ooh. So that adds to his ability accuracy? Instead of, okay, wait a minute. That's interesting. So if he's facing something that reduces his ability accuracy, it increases it instead. And if it is something that increases it, it'll decrease it? Huh. I did not know that. While one of Atuma's personal abilities with a listed chance has over a 100% chance to trigger, the ability has a chance to trigger additional times. Okay. Um, each time the chance is equal to the former chance, minus 100%. This repeats until the ability fails due to chance. Hmm. Has over a 100% chance to trigger... You know, um, I've often mentioned in my videos why Kabam does a percentage, like 100%, instead of just saying it's going to happen. This is why. Because your percentages can go higher and lower. So, let me see. With a listed chance, does that... Okay. I was trying to tap on it since it was colored. I was hoping that it would do a little uh, tool tip. Um, all right, so any of his personal abilities, if it has over 100%, it has a chance to trigger more than once, and it's equal to the former chance minus 100%. Okay, that, that I see. I understand now. So basically, say he had a 200% chance to trigger. It's going to trigger multiple times, but the second time it triggers... It's going to be the 200%, just, you know, hypothetically, a 200% minus 100%, so it'll go back to 100%. So it won't be over 100%. So if it was 201%, then it would have the additional chance, then it would get reduced by 100, it would still be over 100%, which would be 101, and trigger again, then it would go under 100%, and then it would stop. Interesting. So it's like a chain reaction. All right. Um, his rough skin braises the opponent. Okay, so that's, you're going to take damage when you hit him. Okay. It does physical damage when they strike him or his block with a contact attack so what that means is that if you want to avoid this damage you have to deal with him with non-contact attacks now i don't know all of them but i know shuri i believe doesn't make contact and i think havoc maybe and i know there's others that don't make contact so that's what you need to look at when you're looking at a counter for him Look at someone that does not make contact with their attacks. Even like Omega Red, um, I think his tentacle, I think his tentacle attacks don't make attack, uh, don't make contact. I'm not sure. 
But look for that, okay? Non-contact attacks. Now, whenever opponent evades Ituma, while he has less than one bar, he has a 100% chance to instantly gain 10% of his max power. Oh, that is so annoying. And massively go unstoppable. So this is another reason he's so annoying. When he has lower than one bar of power and you evade, which, of course, if he's attacking you, it's very likely, especially at the start of the fight, he's going to gain power. Now, that can also help you because he will get to that first bar of power quickly and then you'll be able to evade without him gaining that. However, he'll go unstoppable. But it won't be that long, but it's still annoying. Okay, his base regeneration rate is 25% instead of the usual 100%. Okay. All right. So this hydration, max stacks 20, is also something that you need to be aware about uh, when fighting him. All right, so the water in Atuma's special attacks grants him stacks of hydration, which are passives that fall off one at a time over seven seconds as he dries out. With every stack, Atuma's attack rating is increased and his regeneration rate is increased. So the more special attacks he throws, the worse he's going to be. Okay? At 10 stacks, he becomes immune to incinerate and gains a precision passive, increasing his critical rating. So if you've ever fought him and you're like baiting out specials because he's on some node where you don't want him to get, you know, high and he might have a lot of uh, power gain or something like that. And then you got wrecked. That's why. He's gaining those hydration stacks. And then he starts critting you like crazy. Then at 19, he becomes passively unstoppable. So you do have counters for passive unstoppable. I know She-Hulk can do it. Um, and I know there's some others that can uh, prevent it. So bear that in mind also when you're thinking of who to bring in against him. When he is inflicted with or immune to an incinerator shock, he loses one stack of hydration and hydration falls off um, 30% faster while suffering from cold snap. All right. So going up against him with, say, Iceman with the cold snap, um, uh, Elsa, I believe, can also do it. But keep in mind that you still have the contact where you'll be taking damage. So he's he's annoying. He is annoying, but he does have counters. All right, so heavy attack. Attempt to purify one non-damaging debuff. So this makes him extremely annoying to try and parry. Basically, don't bother. Unless you have, um, I believe, the pre-fight for uh, White Magneto, perhaps. Or you're using someone like um, Apocalypse. I believe, or Bishop, I believe they can counter that. But again, he has other stuff going on. So you have to weigh all of these different things. So let's see, replace it with a concussion. Yeah. So basically, you try to parry him. He's going to purify it. And... Let's see. Reducing his ability accuracy by 50% for 25 seconds. Okay. Just remember, if you try to parry him for that, you know, to reduce his... Now, I'm not sure because it says reducing his ability accuracy, but we remember we read earlier where it gets reversed. So I'm not sure. If you parry him and it says it'll reduce it, that might mean that he's going to gain 50%. Not sure on that, how that works. All right. This ability also triggers when he's inflicted with a stun or infuriate. Okay. So 
Hercules, don't do an infuriate on him. And when you parry him, that stun will get purified. All right, so special one is going to give him stacks of hydration. And you've already seen, we don't want him to have a lot of hydration stacks. We really don't. And you've also seen ways to reduce his hydration stacks. So keep all of that in mind when you're trying to figure out who to take against this guy. You want to keep his hydration stacks down. Um, let's see. He gets true accuracy. Oh, that's fun. Um, last seven seconds. That's with his special one. Special two, <laughs> look at the 200% chance to gain two stacks of hydration. Do you remember what we read earlier? Let's go back up here. That was 200%. Do you remember? Let me see. Where was it? There it is. I think that counts. That's why it's 200%. So it has a chance, 100% or whatever, it has the, a chance to trigger a second time. So the way I'm understanding it, he fires his special two, and there is a chance he will get four stacks of hydration instead. Okay? And then he can gain a cruelty passive, increasing his crit damage for 16 seconds, and it'll trigger through your block. Nasty. Triggering one of these pauses his existing personal concussions. Okay. And then finally, his special three, he will gain five stacks. Notice it's 110%. That is deliberate because now it has a chance to trigger again and give him 10 stacks of hydration. If I'm understanding this correctly, he has a 100% chance to inflict a bleed on the opponent. Okay. For 20 seconds. Woo. When one of these bleeds fails to apply due to an immunity, inflict a physical vulnerability buff. Oh, so he'll start doing more damage regardless. He'll either bleed them. If they're bleed immune, he's going to just start doing more damage physically. Wow. So that is it for Atuma. Very, very annoying defender. Hopefully this um, deep dive will help you counter him. Uh, you can counter him with, with gameplay as well as, of course, going in with the proper counter champion like Shuri. But you also want to remember his other mechanics so that you don't find yourself, for example, pushing him uh, into a lot of specials and then getting wrecked. All right, so that's gonna do it, guys. Thank you all for watching. Uh, take care, and you all have a blessed day.